إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما We begin by thanking and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in abundance and we beseech him to send his peace and blessings and mercy and salutations upon the last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon his family and his companions and all those that follow his sunnah and his way until the end of time. On this last blessed Friday of the blessed month of Ramadan, we remind one another as we do every Friday that we renew our taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is especially interesting on this particular day being that it is in the month of taqwa and on the last Friday of this blessed month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to witness the end of this month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who fasted this month with conviction and certainty in the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who stood up in the night and prayed with conviction and with certainty in the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who had the opportunity to witness Laylatul Qadr if it already passed. And if it has not yet passed, then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who do not miss it. What's especially important about this reminder of taqwa is because as we said, this is in the month of taqwa. And when we began this month, actually, even before we began the month of Ramadan, when we had this blessed gathering before Ramadan began, and we wanted to share some ideas and remind one another about how to prepare for Ramadan. And then we began the month of Ramadan with strength, alhamdulillah. And then we felt a little bit of a dip in the middle, so we reminded one another again. And now that we find ourselves at the conclusion of this month, we remind yet one another yet again that there are so many objectives and benefits from this month. There are physical benefits. There are mental benefits. They say your immune system benefits from fasting. They say you, all different types of benefits from observing the fasting during the month of Ramadan. And we mentioned several of these. And you heard from different people giving khutbah. But time and again, we always said and we will continue to say that the primary and the main objective and the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do what we have been doing this month and what we hope to attain from this month is taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so as we come to the close of this month, in just a few days, and we look forward to the celebration that we will all enjoy insha'Allah ta'ala, we yet again remind ourselves that what we need to exit with this month with is taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we talked about this concept and this phenomenon of taqwa from so many different angles. And today, one more insha'Allah ta'ala. You see, the companions, they used to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam questions so that they can better understand and so that they can learn and grow. And so the famous companion Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the great scholars of the Sahaba, he simplified this idea of taqwa for us in a way that helps us understand not just what we do here in this month of Ramadan, but what we hope to maintain and attain and achieve throughout the rest of our lives and throughout the rest of this year. He said radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rests on two things. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuta'u fala yu'sa. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is obeyed and not disobeyed. Simple yet profound. And the other pillar that he mentions radiallahu ta'ala anhu 
is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yudhkar fala yunsa. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered and that He is not forgotten. And we do not forget where we came from, who created us, and what our purpose of existence is to begin with. If we survey the verses that speak about taqwa in the Qur'an, if we want to quickly look over many of these verses, we will see that each time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to have taqwa, each time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us to renew our taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there comes usually afterwards a call to action. A call to action, whether it has to do with obedience, yuta'u, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a particular commandment. Like for example, this verse that we've been hearing so many times about fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum al-siyam. It's been prescribed upon you. And the call for taqwa comes. Or a prohibition to stay away from something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited us from. Or remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or we see a call to action that has to do and revolves around our dealings with one another. Survey the verses of taqwa, you will find this common denominator throughout the Qur'an. How we deal with one another. Like for example, the verse that we begin most Jumu'ah khutbahs with, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadida. Say what is good. Say a proper and good word. Our dealings and our relationships with people. When we have taqwa, it directly impacts those dealings and those relationships. We also begin this blessed gathering with a profound verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is His right. Fulfill the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have taqwa. And if we really stop and think about that verse, we won't be able to. You won't be able to. It's impossible to live every second of your life maximizing the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not angels. We are human beings. We have been made to mess up and forget. That's what we do. That's what makes us human. So it doesn't matter that we make mistakes. What matters is that we are people of tawbah. We are people that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we quickly turn back to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a lot of space over here if we can fill it up before it gets too late. Please come forward as much as you can. This is the last Friday and many people don't want to miss this. So let us make space for our brothers and sisters. And by the way, as you are moving forward, for the past several years, every time I give Jumu'ah khutbah, this pocket over here is always empty. So next time you come to the masjid, just come directly to the side and fill it up. Then we won't have to make these announcements. And another announcement also is when you enter and the adhan is being made, that you pray your two rak'ahs if you want to pray your two rak'ahs right away. Because the khutbah is more valuable than the adhan. So when you enter, pray your two rak'ahs and listen to the khutbah. Please come forward as much as you can. There's a lot of space. And if you see space in the NPR, please fill it. اِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ Fully fulfilling the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in taqwa. We're not going to be able to. You might be shocked. Wait a second. You tell us that verse every single Friday. Now you're telling me I can't do that? See, the Prophet ﷺ told us, "Istaqimu walan tuhsu." Be perfectly upright. Remain steadfast. But by the way, you won't always be able to. Because that's the nature of the human being. And part of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that process of tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us by way of His Messenger that if we did not make mistakes and then turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah could get rid of us and replace us with another creation that made mistakes and made tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah loves those who repent. And so when we want to understand what it means to fully have taqwa as it is His right subhanahu wa ta'ala, we look at other verses of the Qur'an. See, the Qur'an is beautiful. When we want to understand it, we have to look at it as a holistic text. Not just pick and choose verses and understand them exclusively, but we want to understand them in light of one another. If we go to another part of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اتقوا الله ما استطعتم Have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. Here's something very interesting about the usage of this verse. Many people who know this verse, many of us who have heard this verse before, we use this verse as an excuse. We use this verse to minimize the wrong that we are doing. 
Well, I'm only doing this, not that. It could be that bad, but I'm not that bad. I'm just a little bit bad. You know, just as much as I can. This is as much as I can. That's it. I've hit my ceiling. We're done. That's as much taqwa as I have in me. Game over. But that's exactly the opposite of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant by this verse. That's exactly the opposite of what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught. And that's exactly opposite of how the companions acted. Let us look at this verse in context. In context. And when we look at it in context, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this collection of verses, in that part of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the fitna of wealth and of children. A family. Your wealth, your children, your families, your, your daily life, the stuff that goes on every single day, is a fitna, it's a test, it's a trial. You see the Sahaba, the companions, there were some of them that were so eager and so zealous. And when they fell short, they felt like hypocrites. And we mentioned this story previously, the famous story of the companion Hanbala, who literally announced to the other companions, I'm a hypocrite. And he went to Abu Bakr, the best of the Sahaba, and he told him, I'm a hypocrite. Why? Because when I'm with the Messenger of Allah, I'm amazing. And when I go home to my family and my wealth, I'm a disaster. I'm a hypocrite. Even Abu Bakr, this greatest companion, with all of his knowledge and wisdom, he was stumped by this question. He said, you know, we've got to go to the Messenger of Allah and resolve this, because I'm the same way. And when they went to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, that's exactly how you should be. What did you expect? Did you expect that you were angels? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, if you were always perfect the way you are when you were with me, the angels would have come down and given you a handshake. Because it would have been that amazing. But that doesn't happen. But an hour for this and an hour for that. That's how they understood taqwa. That's how they understood ittaqullaha mastata'tum. When the companion Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As wanted to fast every single day, not Ramadan, outside of Ramadan. We're fasting every day now in Ramadan, and for some of us it's challenging. Imagine this companion wants to fast a whole year like that. And he wants to finish the recitation of the Quran every single day. We try to finish it once this month if we can. Some people do more than that, some people less. He wants to finish the recitation of the Quran every day. And the Prophet ﷺ is telling him, calm down. He wants to pray Qiyam layl every night. Alhamdulillah, some of the best of us, they pray at the last 10 nights. He wants to do it every night throughout the year. The Prophet ﷺ is telling him to calm down, to slow down a little bit, to be more consistent. When you find yourself in that surrounding of tests and trials, then you have as much taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we see and what we realize and what we understand is that ittaqullaha mastata'tum is not an excuse. Ittaqullaha mastata'tum is the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that basically tells us we have no excuse. Because we always have the capability to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what the situation is, no matter what our surroundings are, no matter how difficult the situation is, we have the capacity to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what we learn from the month of Ramadan. That we have that capacity and we have that ability. And that's what we take away and that's what we exit with from this blessed month of Ramadan. How do we exit this month of Ramadan? In order to maintain those pillars of taqwa that we mentioned Ibn Mas'ud taught us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be obeyed and not disobeyed, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be remembered and not forgotten, there's got to be some changes. And they don't have to be big changes, but there have to be changes, there has to be a commitment to change. And so right now, when we sit down between these two khutbas, and we take a short break, we're going to say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, we are going to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a blessed moment. But right now when we take that pause, every single one of us needs to think, I have something in my life that is not supposed to be there. It's not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It might be a relationship that's not pleasing to Allah. It might be riba. It might be interest that is not pleasing to Allah. It might be a habit. It might be an addiction. It might be something that I always say that always comes out of my tongue. I've only got a few days left. I have the capacity to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will exit this month subtracting that from my life. And when we take that pause, 
you think to yourself, I have to have a commitment to change. I've got to do something so that I can have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mastata'at as much as I can. Because you know what? I can't come to the masjid five times a day. I can't do that. But I can come to the masjid for fajr. I can't come to the masjid for fajr. I start work at 5 a.m. I can come to the masjid for isha. I can't come to the masjid for isha. I have work at that time. I can come to the masjid for salatul maghrib. I can be a part of this masjid. When we hear about supporting the masjid, our minds automatically go towards donating and money and checks. And that's wonderful. We should really do that, by the way. This is a very important time for that. But you know how you really support the masjid? By what you're doing right now. You that are here, everyone that is here, we are all special. You are here for Salatul Jumu'ah, you are here to fulfill an obligation. You are the minority. If you look at the population of Muslims, it's huge. But if you compare that, you juxtapose that with how many masajid we have, there's a discrepancy there. Because the majority of people are not doing what you're doing right now. But you are here every single Friday, fulfilling this obligation, hearing the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being reminded and renewing your taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we exit this month of Ramadan with a commitment to change. Not because ittaqullaha mastata'atum is an excuse, but because ittaqullaha mastata'atum have taqwa as much as I can, is the declaration that I'm going to exit this month telling myself, I have no more excuses. My Creator, my Lord and my Master created me here for a purpose. And I am going to يُطَاعُ فَلَا يُعْصَى I'm going to obey Him and not disobey Him. يُذْكَرْ فَلَا يُنْسَى I'm going to remember Him and I will not forget where I came from. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا One more call and reminder to please move forward as much as you can بسم الله وإذا قيل لكم تفسحوا في المجالس فافسحوا When you are called to spread out and fill all the spaces in the gatherings then do so Jazakumullah khairah. May Allah reward you for your patience and for your consideration of all your brothers and sisters that are coming after you. Perhaps they had difficulty with the parking. May Allah ease that situation for us all. Ameen. There are still a few very blessed days of the month of Ramadan. Today is the 26th day of Ramadan and tonight is the eve of the 27th. It's an odd night. And it's a night that many of the companions were very hopeful that it could be Laylatul Qadr. And there is still the 29th night of Ramadan. There is still the 28th night of Ramadan. These are all blessed nights that Rasulullah would bring to life with Salah, would bring to life with the recitation of the Quran. Perhaps, perhaps there might be a few people here today that came and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought them here for a reason to hear a simple reminder and now they are going to maximize these past next few days. Perhaps their forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in just these next few nights. And after these few nights pass, then we will have a celebration. We will have Eid al-Fitr. And we all love celebrations. And everyone loves celebrations. That's why Eid is the biggest congregation and gathering we have. Everybody loves celebrations. Because by nature, a celebration is easy. It's fun. It's joyous. It's enjoyable. And celebrations are always easier than consistent fulfillment of obligations. But what is more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah loves to see the Muslims celebrate. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see the believers happy, especially when it's 
with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and He does not love anything more than His servants fulfilling the obligations. As Allah told us by way of the Prophet in a hadith Qudsi that the servant, the human being does not come closer to Allah with anything more beloved rather than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made fard and obligatory. That is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that requires more struggle. That requires more ittaqullaha mastata'atum. Of course it does. Because it requires us to push ourselves. It requires us to always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, celebrating is easy. But being consistent, there is some challenge. But the sweetness of it is unparalleled. It's more sweet than any celebration that you can imagine because it's halawatul iman. It's the sweetness of iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in all of our hearts. As we are about to exit this month of Ramadan, the final advice that we have for one another is that we continue to learn and we continue to remind one another. We need to be in a state of one of two things. Either we are learning something new about Allah or we are being reminded about our Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this gathering was dedicated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a remembrance, to be a dhikr, and to be a reminder for one another. So let us always find ourselves either in the state of growth and learning or in the state of rejuvenation and reminding. Expose yourself to the mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of us is going to receive wahi. We have to put ourselves and our families and our children and expose ourselves to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue the process of purification. The pious predecessors and the scholars, they said that what rectified the situation of the ummah in the very beginning is the same thing that will rectify the situation of the ummah in the end and that is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the famous companion Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu said لو طهرت قلوبكم ما شبعت من كلام ربكم if your hearts were pure it would never be satiated and satisfied and say this is enough that I've heard from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we purify our heart? The same thing that we are trying to achieve is exactly the same tool by which we achieve it. We want to have a connection with the Quran, we've got to expose ourselves to the Quran more. Whether that's by reading, or recitation, or translation, or listening, or attending certain programs like the summer intensive program that we will be having as soon as Ramadan ends to understand what exactly it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to be people of the Quran, the special allies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we conclude, please, please pay attention to these few important announcements. Tomorrow will be the last community iftar. We have had community iftars every Saturday. Tomorrow will be the last one, inshaAllah ta'ala. So please don't miss out on that. Zakatul fitr is an obligation that we need to fulfill before the day of Eid comes. And the estimated amount for that is $10 per person in your household and under your responsibility. And you will see boxes dedicated to that. They have written on them Zakatul fitr. So please fulfill that obligation. Tonight, because it's the 27th eve of Ramadan and also because it's weekend and many people want to maximize the benefit of this night, we are going to have an all-night program, inshaAllah ta'ala. We will rest for a short amount of time after Taraweeh and we will resume prayers at 11.45. We'll have some short inspirational talks by some of our local esteemed scholars and speakers and we'll also have suhoor together, inshaAllah ta'ala. And on Sunday, the 29th night of Ramadan, in Taraweeh, inshaAllah ta'ala, we will make khatam of the Quran, we will complete the recitation of the Quran that we have been reciting in the night prayer, in the taraweeh and tahajjud prayers. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the Masjid newsletter, that you check the website often for the announcement for the day of Eid. Salatul Eid will be in the Honda Center, which is right off of the 57 over there on the other side of the highway of the Angel Stadium, the Honda Center. And the doors will open at 6.30 a.m. and Salatul Eid will be at 7.30 a.m. Make sure you subscribe to the website and uh, to the newsletter and you check the website to know exactly the day of the announcement. And that is the most efficient way of finding out rather than calling because uh, the volume of calls will not allow for everyone's call to be taken. Also remember that we do have a Hajj package here for this masjid, alhamdulillah. And there are less than 10 seats remaining. I have that pleasant announcement to make. So if anybody has that inkling or that intention or you know someone that does, you must hurry 
because the seats will fill uh, quickly and there is going to be an Eid festival July 9th and 10th in downtown Anaheim and as you heard the announcement about the IOC extension property you will see flyers for tours being offered for that and also a call for your support please support the masjid and the activities of the masjid with your presence and with your financial contributions may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all people that support his houses may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who exit the month of Ramadan people of taqwa may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase within us this strength and the muscle of taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be people who obey him and do not disobey him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not forgive him, forget him. عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه وألائه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة